You're listening to the Traffic and Conversion Show. I'm your host, Michelle Fernandez, and today's episode is all about unwinding the complexity, shedding light on the path to simplification, and why embracing a leaner approach to your tech stack could be the best decision that you make for your business. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Today is all about your tech stack. Now, what got me thinking about doing this episode is because in the past quarter, maybe two quarters, we have built out so many funnels for people who have, I would say, between four to nine tools in their tech stack. And if you're like, wait, Michelle, what the heck is a tech stack? Well, it is all of the tools that you are using on your customer's journey. So we're talking like your email platform, where you house your courses, the landing pages that you're using for registrations or your sales pages, your checkout pages where people can buy from you, you where the people book appointments, right? Your calendar bookings, you get the idea. All of those are tools in your tech stack. Now, I wanted to talk to you today about the efficiency of having a simplified tool stack and why, contrary to popular belief, having a gazillion tools, you can actually like hinder your growth rather than to help the growth of your business. Now, when you have so many tools in your tech stack, you end up duct taping everything together to make it work, right? So what happens is things start to break. (laughs) Or when you go to make a change, it's like, wait a minute, what is where or what connects to where and how is it connected, right? There's so much room for error, not to mention the ton of money that you are spending on all of these tools. So let's get into how to simplify your tech stack. So first is to do an audit, right? We're talking auditing your current stack. So the first step towards any simplification is auditing, right? Identify every tool and software that you are using and categorize them by their function and necessity, right? So it's kind of like cleaning your closet. You need to know what you have before you can decide what stays and what goes, right? So it involves really taking a Google Sheets, right? and taking inventory of every piece of software and tool that you use for your marketing automation and your customer relationship management or your CRM, right? Um, Even to your analytics and your communication tools. So how do you do this? List every tool in that spreadsheet, right? So you gather whatever your invoices, open up your previous bank accounts and kind of see, usually what I do is I make a list from A to Z because no, like naming conventions is a big thing for me. Everything must be in alphabetical order because I hate spending time trying to find stuff. I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves. What is your be- biggest pet peeve? I can't stand um, going into anywhere and spending 10, 20 minutes trying to find something where I should just be able to go and find it. But that's just, let me get off my soap, my soapbox there. Okay, so you want to go back either gather invoices, gather your bank statement and look to see, okay, when are these subscriptions coming in? And then what I would do is I would also put, are you paying for those monthly or annually? And then what the bill is, okay? So we wanna start creating this list. Then what I would do is I would consult with each department within your organization. So if you know someone is on your team is building your funnels, be like, hey, are you using this tool, this tool, this tool, right? Because how many times have we signed up for a tool, but we're not using it anymore, right? Okay, then you want to, if you want to make another column, is really group the tools or tag them or categorize them by their purpose, right? So are you using this for marketing, sales, or customer support, okay, or something similar? 
then for every tool, you're going to evaluate how frequently it is used and by whom. So this really helps identify redundancies or underutilized tools. Okay. And then what we're going to get to later, but I'm going to say it now is that you are going to put it on your calendar or in your project management system, whatever that looks like for you to do this at least once a quarter. So depending on your business size and how this is going, and by having these columns, you know exactly who on the team to go to, to be like, hey, so-and-so, are we still using these tools, right? You just wanna check in always because sometimes you might've signed up again and you're like using it and then you're like, mm, that didn't work as well as I thought. And then you stop using it, but you never cancel the tool, okay? Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna eliminate the unnecessary. So after you organized all your, your tech stack in your audit, it's really time to ask yourself, does this tool solve a problem that I currently have, right? Are there any redundancies? If a tool isn't serving a clear purpose or it's underutilized or no longer aligns with your business goals, it's time for you to let it go even if you already paid for the annual subscription. So a lot of times that happens, you're like, oh, I already paid for it for the whole year. Well, you don't want that sucker to renew. So in your project management system, you are gonna put a due date about a week or two before to go in and cancel that subscription, right? So you wanna make sure because sometimes you can cancel it and it'll just cancel be like when it goes to renew or some tools cancel it right then. All right, so you just wanna make sure because if you can just cancel it right then and you still have access or not, um, you just wanna make sure that if for whatever reason you already paid for it for a year, you don't wanna kind of get rid of it just yet. So that's up to you, okay? So a redundancy check, identify the tools that are overlapping functionalities. This is huge and decide which one better fits your needs, okay? Then the usage evaluation. So if a tool is rare, rarely used or only benefits for a small portion of your team, consider if its function is crucial to your operations. Like, do you really need it or not, right? And then you wanna look at cost versus value. So really assess if the cost of each tool is justified by the value that it brings to your business. So I know a lot of times, um, this is kind of a pro tip, where maybe either when we started out in our business and we're trying to save money, we went with the, the the less expensive tool. And then it still didn't do all the things, right? So you think you're saving money, but in actuality, the time and everything that it's sending you to maintain it, do whatever you need to do, is not really saving you. So even though you're spending less money, it's probably costing you more money in the long run. And more importantly, depending on the tool and the lack of functionalities or capabilities that it has, it's costing you way more money than you even know because it's not helping you get the conversions that you need to get, right? It's not helping you make the sales, right? So for an example, um, let's say, a lot of people are trying to go to these all-in-one things, but they started out at something. So let's just take ConvertKit. They are an email platform. That's what they are to do. Then they added in the availability for you to create landing pages and or to create some sort of um, where somebody can buy in there. However, the way they have those landing page templates or the way you can set them up is so limited that they're, the pages aren't really built for conversions. So what's happening? You are gonna lose sales or registrations by using those platforms, right? Just something to think about. Okay, then you wanna consolidate the essential. So after you're cutting the excess and you're looking for opportunities to consolidate these essential tools. So many other platforms offer these multiple functionalities, really allowing you to reduce the number of separate tools that you need. This not only saves money, but it really streamlines the training and the integrations, right? It streamlines all these, or I should say, avoids mistakes, right? It really helps you eliminate that. So this step will really allow you to focus on merging these functionalities into fewer platforms, ideally choosing tools that serve multiple purposes, okay? So you want to look for tools that can integrate with each other. 
right? Reducing that need to duct tape, right? To put it all together. Then you want to prioritize platforms offering more than one service, such as like the email, such as the CRM, right? What are those things are? And then how good are they at those things? Okay. So I know this happened, like even with Kajabi, they're like, okay, this is the best that I got because it has these things in it. But it's like, does it? It doesn't allow certain capabilities that you want. So you're like, okay, but this is still a better choice for me, okay? And then you wanna ensure the tools that you can, can grow with your business, accommodating more users or more advanced features as you need, which in Kajabi's case, a lot of my clients that are there they're kind of stuck because there's there's limited on the types of automations that you can do to get into those, you know, upsells and resells and coming back in. It's like a whole functionality. And then you need a different level of membership, which again, costs you more money to be able to have those capabilities, okay? Now, next is to evaluate and optimize. So this goes back to where you're continuously evaluating and really optimizing your choices. So as technology evolves, so do your business needs, right? So keep an eye out for newer, more efficient tools that can replace outdated ones. So you want to make sure that you have a streamlined tech stack to ensure that it remains aligned with your business objectives. And when I say this, I definitely do not mean every quarter you're changing platforms, right? Because you also want to try to do your homework to find something that, like I like I just said, that you can grow into and it has these features there that you're like, hmm, I'm not using that now, but once I understand the strategy behind it, or once I understand how to use it, wow, will my business really take off, right? It is a big task for you to go from one platform to another, and it's actually totally worth the move if you're moving to a place that allows you these capabilities. And we want to remember that we're looking at the capabilities that will allow you to get higher conversions and increase your bottom line, okay? So again, regular audits, whether those are monthly, quarterly, biannually, audits to really reassess your tool's effectiveness and necessity. And then collect feedback from your team on the tools that they're using focusing on any gaps or inefficiency. So this is something really to also do now when you're doing the audit is to ask the team, hey, how do you like working on that platform? If you can have something else, what would you really need? And then when you're going to search for this new, you know, all-in-one tool, let's say, for your growth, then you could be looking for, hey, Susie said that she would really like it if we can do an automation that does this. Or, you know, Joe says that I would love to have in the sales department the capability to have these pipelines too, right? So what does that look like? And then keep your eye on or do some homework on these technologies that can further simplify or enhance your operations. Because I wanna just say that I am all about marketing, right? Bringing new people and new sales in. And I am also all about what can you do with the, with the customers that you already have. It costs you way more to obtain or a new customer than it does to like retain a new one, an existing one, right? So you want to make sure that whatever platforms you are using, you can do so in fulfillment. How are you going to get them to resell, to upsell? How are you going to get them to know that you care, that they're seen, that they're heard, celebrate their milestones, acknowledge their birthdays, all those kinds of things. You want something that will do certain things on automation, whether it be to send them an email, whether it be to notify the team to pick up the phone and make a call or to order those flowers for their birthday. What does that look like? And does your all-in-one system have those capabilities? Okay. So here are a few key strategies for simplification. So we're identifying opportunities for integration and automation to save time and reduce those manual functions, prioritize tools that offer scalability and flexibility as your business grows, ensuring that you're not switching tools every few months, right? And then definitely don't hesitate to cut ties with tools that you are no longer using or no longer serving your evolving needs, okay? 
So again, identify, like if you might be saying, well, how do I, how do I know? Right. So this is when you're really coming in and talking with your team. And if it's just you and you're a solopreneur, what I would love for you all to do is identify repetitive tasks that can be automated by your existing tools, really freeing up your time. Okay, look to see where you can utilize some APIs and integration platforms to make your tools work together seamlessly. And if you can find a tool where you don't need a Zapier or a Make Scenario to do it, that's the way you want to go. Okay, then choose to choose tools that offer custom uh, customizable features and can again scale with your business growth. Now, sometimes, like I said. If you pay a little bit more money, we're going to looking towards the long term, right? So we're saying, okay, it might save me so much money per month here. However, what is it going to make me in the long run, right? So just keep that in mind. And I will say this, that no matter what platform that you are on, something is going to not be there that you want, that you were used to over here. And sometimes it's like, it's not that it doesn't have what you want. You're just used to something looking, right? It's that comfort versus going over here and saying, oh, instead of clicking here, I have to click here. Or maybe it's one more step that I have to do. And really, who cares? As long as you're making more money, as long as you can build it all out and set it. Now, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to check out Optima Funnels if you are serious about changing up your tech stack, because with the customers that I told you had those seven to nine stacks, I'm like, hey, let's just switch this over here. And I am telling you that they are saving on average about seven to $800 a month on going over to Optima Funnels. It's totally worth a look because you are going to see all the capabilities that you cannot beat the price point on it. So head over to OptimaFunnels.com and I'll definitely drop the link of where you can find that in the show notes. Now, taking action on this can really feel daunting, right? Especially when you go to switch to a new platform. But remember, the goal is to make your life easier and your business more efficient. So these steps are really crucial as they provide this clear path to decluttering your tech environment, leading to better efficiency and potentially significant cost savings, okay? So again, begin by listing and categorizing all your tools and look for tools that serve similar purposes and decide which one are essential, okay? Now find opportunities to connect your tools with maybe smoother workflows, implement autom automation wherever possible to save time and reduce errors, and then engage your team to understand their needs and challenges with the current tech stack. So when you go to look for a new one, that it will have more of what they're looking for because it'll make their lives so much easier. And one other thing I want to stress about the tech stack is that you want to make sure you're able to look at your analytics where it goes. So one thing that comes to mind, and I'm not speaking for all the things, it's just everything that's happened so recently that it's like there, it's like in Kajabi, for example, you do have some stats that you have but not as integrate that you need in order to optimize your landing pages, optimize your emails, all the good things. So you definitely wanna pick something that you can actually go in and say, okay, in this automation, what happened in these emails? Are people opening? Where are they dropping off, right? On each of your campaigns, or you wanna know how many people are actually clicking on those pages versus becoming, converting to a lead or sale, right? You wanna be able to see all these things in order to help you to optimize and monetize, okay? So simplifying your tech stack is not just about cutting costs, it's about making strategic decisions that align with your business goals, really streamlining your operations and enhancing your team productivity and making your customers way happier, right? So with these steps that we talked about today, you are going to be well on your way to creating a more efficient and scalable tech environment. So if you are ready to take action and simplify your tech stack, you owe it to yourself to check out Optima Funnels. So go to OptimaFunnels.com. And I thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. Remember, simplification 
in simplification, there is power. So keep streamlining, keep growing, and keep optimizing to monetize. I appreciate you so much for being here with me today. Until next time, let's grow your business together.